All right, here's your logarithmic review. For some of it, you might need a calculator. If you're playing like at home doing this, then you might want to go on Desmos to do your calculator work. All right, do you know how to graph? Let's go through this. Step number one, what's the basic logarithm? Just the base and x. And what are two points on that? So one, zero, the base and one, and the asymptote at zero. And then we're going to change it. So I don't see a number for a in front. So a is one, but it doesn't change anything. H is negative one, that matters. And K is negative three. Those are the only ones that matter. And again, these aren't numbers, but operations. So we are going to subtract one to all the X values. So I'm gonna do that over here. So one take away one, I think that's zero. Two take away one, and then zero take away one. I got it. Now for the Y values, I'm gonna subtract three. So zero subtract three, uh, one subtract three, and there we go. So I'm going to like save space for the next one. There we go. So 0, negative 3, uh, 1, negative 2, and then x equals negative 1. And then we're going to follow the asymptote, curve through the two points, and we have our logarithmic curve. Underneath here, domain range and end behavior, the domain goes from the asymptote to infinity, the range are all numbers. We just said the vertical asymptote is x equals negative one and the end behavior, the right end goes up and the left is the asymptote. And then when the graph is at the asymptote, it, uh, the function goes to negative infinity. So as always, you need to do this first, right? And then see if you did it correctly. All right, let's do the second one. So what point, what are we gonna start with? So the basic logarithm, is just base 3. And then the two points are 1, 0, 3, 1, and x equals 0. Then I'm going to change these. So in this situation, I have a is 3, and k is the last number. And then h is opposite day, so it's positive 2. So that's what I'm going to do. So 1, 0, I'm going to add 2. That's 3. I'm going to add 2. That's 5. I'm going to add 2. That's uh, 2. And then the y coordinate, I need to multiply times 3 and subtract 1. So 0 times 3, subtract 1. Uh, 1 times 3, subtract 1. And then I have my point. So 3, negative 1, 5, and 2. And then my asymptote is at 2. Make sure you draw a broken line. And then follow the asymptote through the two points, curve up to the right. And then fill in the domain range and So if you haven't done it, press pause and do it first and then press play. So this goes from two to infinity, all the numbers. Uh, the asymptote is at positive two and then the right end again goes up and the left goes to the asymptote. And then when it goes to the asymptote, it goes down. All right, let's try the next one. Again, press pause and try it if you want. So now we have a fraction for a base. How do I do that? So there it is. So one zero is there, but because I have a fraction, I'm gonna do the reciprocal of the base, and then the y coordinate is the exponent. So I'm gonna go the reciprocal and negative one, and then x equals zero. Again, a is one, so I'm not gonna write it down. So the two that matter, h, is negative 2 and k is negative 1. That's what I'm going to use. So to all the x values, I'm going to subtract 2. So 1 take away 2, uh, 2 take away 2, and then 0 take away 2. The y coordinates, uh, I'm just going to subtract 1. And then that's what I'm going to put on my graph. So negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2. Recognize this is going to decrease because of the fractional base and then negative two. And then instead of starting below, I'm gonna start above and I'm gonna follow the asymptote, go through the points and it curves down to the right. So notice that this is now a decreasing curve. All right, see if we can fill in this part, press pause. So the domain goes from the asymptote, negative two to infinity. The range is all the numbers and the asymptote is at negative two. The end behavior is going to be a little different because the right end now is going down. And then when it goes to the asymptote, it's going up. 
So just recognize the right end goes down, and at the asymptote, it goes up. All right. It's time for you to try one. So can you try this one? Press pause. you got to try first. Then press play. So we have a basic logarithm of 2, log base 2 of x. So the two points are 1, 0, 2, 1, and x equals 0. <clears throat> uh, a is negative 2, h is 3, and k is 1, and then change these. So I'm going to add 3 to these. So 3, 1 plus 3, and 2 plus 3, and 0 plus 3. And then we're going to multiply and add 1. So 0 times negative 2 is 0, add 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, add 1. And then these are the points they're going to put down. So 4 and 1, 5 and negative 1, and then x equals 3. So what does the negative do? It reflects. So normally a base of 2 would be going up to the right, but because um, the reflection, it doesn't go up, it goes down. So we're going to follow above here. We're going to follow, go through the two points, curve down to the right, and you have it. Oh, domain range and end behavior. You try it. Press pause. Try it first. Here we go. So the domain goes from the asymptote, which is uh, 3, to infinity. The range, all the numbers. The vertical asymptote is at 3. And then the right end behavior. So the right end goes down. And then the left, as it goes to the asymptote, it goes up. All right, turn the page. Press pause. If you need help. We'll do the first sum together, but then eventually you need to do them first and then press play. Can you write this as a logarithm? So I'm going to write log base 2 of 12 equals 8, x. Remember, there are three parts, the base, the exponent, and, and the answer. The exponent is by itself. Can you write this as an exponent? Well, the base, the exponent is 5, and what's inside is the answer. Again, try to press pause. Can you evaluate a logarithm? So what exponent is missing here? 5 to what exponent is 125? So that answer is 3. Uh, can you use your calculator? What would you type in your calculator? So we're going to type log 31 divided by log 2. And then use your calculator to do that. So again, use Desmos if you aren't at school doing this. But this is what you get on the exam to be able to use this calculator. And then to three decimal places, we're going to go 4.954. Uh, can you write this as an exponential? What base is there that you don't see is e to the exponent 1 is equal to x minus 3. You could also just write down e equals x minus 3. Write this as a logarithm. The exponent. First of all, the logarithm is ln that has a base of e. What goes inside is the answer, and then the exponent is what it's equal to. All right, write equation as a logarithm. So a base of 10 means no base do we write down. 4 is equal to x plus 3. It's a common logarithm. Write this as an exponential. Again, uh, the base you don't see is 10 to the exponent 3 is equal to the answer, x minus 2. Evaluate a logarithm again. What exponent makes that true? So 3 to the exponent 4 is equal to 81. You can use your calculator if you need to. Use the calculator here again. Press pause. Can you evaluate a logarithm? Do as much as you can before I do it. You'll get much more out of it. So again, we're typing in log 21 divided by log 5. That's 1.892. Uh, can you write this as an exponential? So the base that you don't see is e. The exponent is 3x, and the answer is 12. 
write this as a logarithm. What logarithm has a base of e? What goes inside? And then the exponent is by itself. We practiced until we got that. All right, you know your properties. So can you expand this? When you see multiplying, how do we expand this? By adding. If I see dividing, how do I expand this? By subtracting. If I see an exponent inside a logarithm, that's a product in front. And so know these uh, three, the product, the quotient, and the power property. All right, so mix. So we start with the product in front, start with the exponent. So this should be ln x squared minus ln y to the fourth. <coughs> so that number in front becomes the exponent inside. And then subtracting means you divide. And now it's written as one logarithm. So again, I, I look at the three. That's what I'm going to take care of first. That's the exponent. And then I see multiplying. So that means to bring them together. So I see adding, which means we're going to multiply to bring them together. So I see the two. So I'm going to take care of that first. So I'm going to copy, copy. And then that's going to be z squared. My twos and z's look really similar, so I'm sorry. And then the base of 3 adding means you're going to multiply. And then dividing means we're going to, or subtracting means we're going to divide. See if I can make my 2 a little better. And that's what's called condensing. When we have multiple logarithms and we use properties to bring them into one. The other direction, you have one logarithm and you want to expand. So if you see multiplying, that means you are going to add to expand. So add and then add again. Here, if I see multiplying, that's adding. If I see dividing, that's subtracting. If I see an exponent, that means it goes as a product in front. How about the other way? Can you, again, condense? So if it's expanded, what would it look like? So the number in front multiplying is the exponent inside. And then when you're adding, it means you're multiplying to put that together. Again, the number in front is the exponent. You know already to press pause. And then when you're subtracting, you divide. So all of these you should try first, then press play to see if you did them correctly. Last one here. So I'm looking for that 2. I'm putting it where it belongs. Is an exponent inside. Same thing with the 4. It's an exponent inside. And then I'm going to write this x times y squared divided by z to the fourth. All right, those are your properties. Now, can you solve equations with logarithms or exponentials where you need a logarithm? So the bases are the same. Make them equal to each other and then solve it. So I'm going to subtract 3x and I'm going to add 1 to solve this. And then when I do that, I get x is equal to 5. I do need to make sure that when you plug it into the logarithm, it's greater than 0, which it is. Here, to solve this, um, the answer is x plus 3, the base in the exponent. 4 squared is 16. Subtract 3. And then 16 take away 3, and you have your answer. And then again, to test to make sure 13 plus 3 has to be greater than 0, which it is. All right, can you solve this logarithm? This one's going to require a calculator. x minus 1, the base you don't see is e, and the exponent is 2. Add 1, but now you need your calculator. So it has to go e squared plus 1. So with this calculator, e is in blue. So we go second and then e. And then you'll see it pop up. And then that's 2. Move the cursor. Is it plus 1? And then enter. So 8.389. solve this equation, we need a, a property. So adding means we're going to multiply to bring them together. So that's 3x minus 3. 3 times x, 3 times negative 1. Then we're going to write it as an exponential. So the answer equals the base 
to the exponent 1. So 4 to the exponent 1 is just 4. Um, add 3. Divide by 3. Sorry, add 3, which is 7. Divide by 3. And you get the answer 7 over 3. Uh, 7 over 3, take away 1 is greater than 0, so that works. 7 over 3, right? It's bigger than 2, take away 1. We know it's a positive value. All right. Some more logarithmic equation. Again, make them equal to each other. We're going to subtract 2x. I'm going to subtract 7. And then divide by 2. So when I do the work, I get x equals negative 4. When I plug in 2 times negative 4, take away 1, is that greater than 0? And the answer is no. That means this is not a solution. So we write down no solution. Because when you plug in negative 4, is negative 9 bigger than 0? So we know this is wrong. So we know it's actually smaller than 0, not bigger than 0. So that's why it's no solution. All right. The answer, the base, the exponent, 5 squared is 25, subtract 7, and you have your answer. You should try every question and then press play. And then 18, we know, is a valid answer. We know that 18 plus 7 is greater than 0. Again, a logarithm, a, a lawn, a natural log, the base, the answer. So the answer there, e to the exponent 3, that's the base you don't see. Uh, subtract 1, and then type it in. So e to the exponent 3, subtract 1, and I get 19. Uh, point zero eight six. If you round it, you need a property here again. When you're adding, <clears throat> I mean, you should try it first, right? Press pause. We're going to multiply that together. That's three x minus three is equal to two. So the answer, the base, and the exponent. Six squared is thirty six. Add three. Divide by three, and then you get your answer. And then you have to make sure it's 13. Uh, when you plug 13 into the logarithm, is that greater than 0? Yes, so it's a good answer. How about exponential equations that require logarithms? So here is an exponential equation. You know, the variable is in the exponent. Step one is we're going to isolate the exponential. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Now that it's by itself, we're going to write this as a logarithm. So the exponent the logarithm base 2 of 21, and then we're going to type that in our calculator to get our answer. And I get 4.392. Again, you should try it, right? But I'm going. Add 2. Write as a logarithm, that's base 3 of 2. Uh, divide by 2, and then type it into your calculator. So that's log 2 divided by log 3 divided by 2 at the end. So log, divide, divide, and you get 0 0.315. All right, solve this. Divide by 2. So e to the x minus 1 is equal to 5. Write as a logarithm. So the exponent ln 5, add 1, and it's ln 5 plus 1. There it is. So go ln 5 plus 1, right? So I get 2.609. Let's solve this. Add 1. Uh, divide by 3. And then write it as a logarithm. So we have the exponent, the log, base 4 of 1, and then solve it. Now, I already know without a calculator that a logarithm that has a 1 inside is always equal to 0. So subtract 2 and you have your answer. You could also use your calculator to figure that out. And you get the answer. We're almost there. 
Maybe not. All right, let's solve this equation together. We're going to add 4. You're not doing this to finish your work. You're doing this to learn so you don't fail the exam. Write it as a logarithm. The exponent, the log, base 3 of 28, and then use your calculator to get the answer. So log 28 divided by log five, 3. If you can't press pause and try it on your own, you're not passing the exam, right? So we got to try. So for this one, can you try to do it first and then see what happens? This one's a bit of a trick, sorry. So when you subtract 3, you get 2 to the exponent x plus 1 equals negative 2. That's impossible. An exponential will always have a positive value. So this has no solution to it. No, they, no matter what number you put in, the answer will always be positive. So this will be no solution. The next one, divide by 2. You should try this one. So you should press pause sometime. Can you write this as a logarithm and solve it? So that's 3x minus 1 ln 4. Add 1. Divide by 3. And then put that in the calculator. So I'm going to go ln 4 plus 1. So I'm going to go ln 4 plus 1. Get an answer. And then divide by 3. So I got 0.795. All right, add 4. Divide by 5. And then solve it. So the exponent equal to log base 4 of 5. Subtract 1 and use your calculator. So log 5 divided by log 4, subtract 1. So it equals 0 0.1611. All right, now we get into the stories. I like math stories. You invest $2,000 in an account with an interest rate of 6%, how many years till you double your money? So this is a growth question. So A is your original amount. R, we don't know, right? How many years? Well, actually, we do know R. R is 6%, so it's 0 0.06. T is what I don't know. So we have this formula. Let me see again, because it's growing. So we have that exponential formula. This is what we know. We know 2,000. We know 1 plus 0 0.06. We don't know how much time. And we want to double our money. So instead of 2,000, doubling it would mean how long would it take to become 4,000? So our formula, our setup, and what it's equal to. Then I need to solve this. So I'm going to subtract 2,000. 1 plus 0 0.06. You can use a calculator. It's just 1.06. And then we need to use a logarithm to solve this. So the exponent, the base, is 1.06. And then what goes inside is 2,000. And that will tell me how many years it would take to double your money. So this is what I'm going to type in the calculator. Log 2,000. Uh, divided by log 1.06. That's like way too long. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. I know what I did wrong. <laughs> do you know what I did wrong? You have to divide. Why am I subtracting? You're dividing both sides by 2,000. <laughs> 2,000. Jeez Louise. Where am I? Two. You had to divide. You're doubling your money. Double. Two. Two. But maybe I can get something to learn here. Do I think it's going to take 130 years? Or do I think I made a mistake? And the answer is, I think I made a mistake. And then I go back and I think, what was my mistake? What did I do? It was something silly, right, that I did, which you guys do. And then we change it and go, wait, oh, that, that's better. 12 years. That makes more sense. And then write a good sentence. So I'm going to say it will take 12 years to double your money.
I just try again. Let's see if I can make a mistake again for your benefit. $500 is invested in an account that compounds continuously. So that's really important to me because that tells me the formula. So this is the formula I'm going to use if it's compounded continuously. Uh, what rate do you need to have $800 in your account in five years? So the original amount we put in is $500. I'm looking for the rate. I don't know what it is. But we have five years, and we know the end amount is 800. So I use my formula. Every number I circled, I put in. E is a number in your calculator. R is what I'm looking for. So what rate? I need to make sure that's what I'm looking for, and then I'm going to solve it. I'm not going to try to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to divide by 500. So 800 divided by 500 is 1.6. It's easier to write down. So I'm just going to write down 1.6 and then r times 5 is just 5r and then I'm going to solve that. So the exponent is 5r, the logarithm with a base of e is ln and then 1.6 and then divide by 5 and you have your rate. So ln 1.6 divided by 5 and I get a number, it looks small, right? 0 0.094 but you know that you would move the decimal two to the right to write it as a percent. So it's actually 9.4%. So you would need a rate of 9.4% to have $800 in your account. After in five years. All right, let's go. A city, a city's population is declining at a rate of 2.5% per year. The current population is 18,000. When will the city's population be 11,000? So we're going to use this formula for something that is per year decreasing at that rate, exponential decay, and then the numbers. So the current population is 18,000. The rate, we need to move the decimal, so it's 0 0.025, or you can divide by 100. And then time, I don't know what the time is. So T is what I'm looking for. But the population at the end, our end result is 11,000. So I'm looking for how much time it will take to go down to that number. So I'm going to divide, see how I, I learn from my mistakes. Divide by 18,000. This is not going to be a nice fraction, so I'm just going to leave it as 11 over 18 when you divide out. I'm not going to write it as a decimal because it's irrational, I'm pretty sure. Yep, and then I'm going to write it as 11 over 18. All right, and then we have 1 subtract 0 0.025. So that gives me 0.975. So I'm subtracting these. It gives me 0.975 to the t is equal to 11 over 18. It's okay, there's a decimal and a fraction. And then to write it as a logarithm, the base is 0.975, and then inside would be 11 divided by 18, and then use your calculator to calculate it. So I'm going to go log 11 divided by 18 divided by log 0.975. And then I get the number of years would be 19.5, um, like 19 and a half years. So in 19 and a half years, the city's population will be 11,000. All right, press pause. We've got more stories to do. You invest 50000 in an account with an interest rate of 7%. How many years till you double your money? So we started with 50000 We have an interest rate. We're going to write it as a decimal. We don't know how long until we double our money. 
So from 50,000 to 100,000. All right, now solve it. Again, I'm not making the same mistake. I'm going to divide by 50,000. I'm also going to add this together. So that's 1.07t. When I divide, that's just 2. And then to write it as a logarithm, the base is 1.07. What goes inside is 2. And then use your calculator. So I'm going to go log 2 divided by log 1.07. And that's it. So I get about 10 years. So how many years do you double your money? And the answer is about 10. All right, next one. $1,200 is invested in an account that pays. And here's an important word, compounds continuously. So if it's compounded continuously, then I'm using this formula. At what rate is what I'm looking for? Triple in 15 years. So let's go. So we started with 1,200 E. We don't know the rate, but the number of years is 15 and triple. So if I go times 3, triple it, it's 3,600, and then I solve that. Now the thing is, if I divide here, triple means 3, right? So I'm going to get 3 out of that. And then you multiply r times 5, you get 15r. Write that as a logarithm, and then divide by uh, 15, and you have your answer. And so the rate would be 0 0.073. And as a percent, that would be 7.3%. So you would need a rate of 7.3% to triple your money. Beautiful. All right. This is only for my HP friends, just so you know. So that means if you are in CP, you leave it blank and get full credit. A certain substance has a half-life. How long does it take to become half its size of 15 hours? If you started with 950 grams and 150 grams are remaining, how many days have passed? So what's the formula we use? So we started with 950 grams. One subtract half means 0.5 is the rate. And then it's every 15 hours. So it's T divided by 15. And the end result is 150. So there's the setup to solve for, and again, it says days, not hours. So we'll get to that. So we're going to divide by 950. I don't know if that's a nice number or not. 150 divided by 950. Nope. So I'm just going to write, what's 15 over 9? So divide by 5, I'm going to call that 3 over 19. So the, the hundreds divide out and divide by 5. I feel okay about that. So it's 3 over 19. And this is 0.5. So right now I have, I'm going to rewrite it over here. One take away that is 0.5 to the exponent t divided by 15 is equal to 3 over 19. And then I need to solve it as a logarithm. So the exponent, t divided by 15, uh, the logarithm has a base of 0.5. And then what goes inside is 3 over 19. And then we're going to put that in our calculator and then multiply it times 15. So put that in the calculator, then times 15 will give you the answer. So let me do that. So log 3. Uh, divided by 19, divided by log 0.5, and then we're going to take that answer times 15. So the answer is about 40 hours. Oops, that should be a T. So 40 hours, how would I change that to days? You think, I don't know. Well, how many days there are in a, how many hours there are <laughs> in a day is 24. So to change it to days, we're going to divide by uh, 24, so 40 divided by 24, and I get 1.7 or 1 and 2 thirds days. So in about 1.7 days, the substance will have 
150 grams remaining. I'm going to run out of space. I'm just going to do it this way. It's going to be okay. Another one for my HP friends. How long would you need to invest 13,000 compounded quarterly in order to have that? So the numbers I need, I see the numbers. I need quarterly and this. So I need to know the formula for compounded interest. So I'm going to write down that formula and I'm going to plug in. So we started with 13,000. The interest rate, I don't know, but we're compounding quarterly. That's four. Oh, 6%. I do know it. So 6% is 0 0.06. There it is. But I don't know this part, T. But I know the end result is 20,000. So that's what I'm solving. So I'm going to divide by 13,000. That just gives me 20 over 13. I'm going to add this. I'm going to, in my calculator, I'm going to go 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4. Okay, that's 1. Point so I just put this in my calculator, and I got 1.015 to the exponent 4t is equal to 20 over 13. And then I'm going to write it as a logarithm. So the exponent, the log has a base of 1.015, and then inside the logarithm is 20 over 13. So I'm going to do that in my calculator, and then take that answer divided by 4, and that will give me the answer. So log. So 20 divided by 13 uh, divided by log 1.015. Take that answer, press enter, and then divide by 4, and I get 7.2. So how long would it take? About 7 years. To have 20,000 in your account. All right, this is for everybody. Find the inverse. What does that mean? So think of this as y equals e to the x minus 2. And what would the inverse be? The x and y trade. So this is what it would look like. And then you would have to solve for y to find the inverse. So I need to solve for y. I need to write it as a logarithm. So in the exponent, the logarithm, and then what goes inside the logarithm is x add 2, and you have your answer. And the symbol for inverse is that, and it's ln x plus 2. Again, I want to find the inverse. So I'm going to start with x equals log y plus 1, so the x and y trade. To write this as an exponential is how you would solve it. So what's inside the logarithm, the exponential to the exponent, oops, not e. When you don't see a base, what's the base? 10 to the exponent x and then subtract 1 and you have your inverse. So it's 10 to the exponent x subtract 1 is the inverse of that logarithm. All right, this page is only for my HP friends, you lucky CP people. My favorite new word in the world, a fluffle. A fluffle is a group of wild rabbits. Look it up. I didn't make it up. A fluffle. It's now your new favorite word. A fluffle. I keep saying it because I like the word of 50 wild rabbits, continuous exponential rate. So this is it. After two days, there are 80 rabbits in the fluffle. What's the rate of growth of this fluffle? I keep saying it. So we started with 50. Oops, let's try it again. We started with 50. And we don't know the rate, but after two days, there was 80. And so this equation then will give me what rate we were growing at to get 80. So I'm going to divide by 50. I think that's a nice number. That's 1.6. So we have e to the 2r equals 1.6. And then write it as a logarithm. That's ln. And divide by 2. So ln 1.6 divided by 2. And so this is the rate that they're growing at. I'm going to keep it as a decimal. So they're really growing. And then how long till the fluffle, I love that word, is uh, 0.235. So we're going to use the same, uh, same formula. And so we have 
Uh, we're going to start with the last number, 80. And then our rate, if it stays the same, 0.235. And then how long till it's uh, 500 rabbits then? So now we have 80. How many more days would it take? So we're going to divide by 80. So 500 divided by 80. That's 6.25. Then we're going to write it as a logarithm. So the desk, the exponent, 0.235t, ln, 6.25, and then divide to get t by itself, and then solve it. And the answer is about eight more days. Right, we're in days yet. In about eight more days, there will be 500 wild rabbits in the fluffle. Can I get my word in there? Fluffle. Beautiful. All right, we're almost there. Last one. The population of the United States, and this is actually true, just so you know. I looked it up. I didn't make up the numbers. 2020 is 282 million. Um, what? Okay, I'm going to tell you what happened. I made a typo. You ready? This should say 2,000. Okay, so let's try it again. And I can say I'm sorry. I wish I said 2,000. It was a typo. I did look it up. So in 2,000, the population is 282. In 2020, the population is 330. So I made a mistake. I'm sorry. If the population follows a continuous ex uh, exponential growth model, find the following. So what's the rate of growth? So this continuous model, we started with 282 million. Please don't write down million. 282 is good. We know it's in millions. So 282 works. I don't know the rate, but I know that's 20 years. And now we're at 330 million. Again, I know it's in million, so we're just going to write 330. And now I'm going to solve it. So divide by 282. I think that's an ugly number. And you know what? I don't even care about simplifying it. I'm just going to leave it. And then I'm going to write this as a logarithm. So the exponent is 20R. The logarithm has a base oops, of ln for E. And then what goes inside is 330 divided by 282. And then we're going to take that answer and divide by 20. That will give me the rate that the United States population is growing at. So ln 330 divided by 282. And then that answer divided by 20. All right. So you can see our rate of growth. And it's 0 0.007. Actually, it's 0 0.008. So not quite 1%. Now, I'm going to use this for the next part. So follow this model. What will the population of the USA be in 2050? So in 2020, again, we're going to use this model. So in 2020, we said it was 330 million. The rate, 0 0.008. And then 2050 is how many years after 20? So that's 30 years. So I'm going to go times 30. And that's it. There's nothing to solve for in this one. So 330E, 0 0.008 times 30. We'll round. So at that growth rate, that will be the population of the United States in 2050. Hey, you did it. All right, Mr. G Math over and out. I'm proud of you for reviewing. I'm proud of you that you press pause. You know, I believe in you. You're going to do great on the exam. Till next time.